So, what I want to move on, just a quick race review, because obviously, Stoffel Van Dorn, again, two pole positions, but boy, he can't catch a break. Even in the F1 esports race, he couldn't catch a break. On pole for that as well. On pole, crushing at the first arcade, did it again on Sunday for the F1 esports race, and completely lost it off on traction going, and, and, and it didn't damage his car, thankfully, because there's no damage in, in that race for F1 esports, but obviously fell down the order. Obviously, massively damaged his car, Ed, um, for the Formula E race, and again, once again, driving the race like that for the whole full 15 laps and still able to get home in some decent points i think he, he, he moved up i think he was fourth in the end so um you know a decent result he wasn't fourth he was fifth that was it yeah um and it was one of those things where you you, you always think you're going to be clear until you clip the one bit of the chicane it just bounces you into a wall on the other side basically and it is an easy thing to do um but funnily enough i think van Dorn, dropped a few places and then went climbed back up to second briefly because Andrew Lotto, who was sort of the beneficiary of that, uh, ended up uh, spitting into the wall the lap after. <laughs> so Van Dorn did get back onto the podium briefly before dropping behind a few other drivers whose cars were uh, less encumbered by uh, steering difficulties. And then obviously, Jack, we had Andre Lotterer, who then was next to spin, obviously profited, went up into the podium, was doing really well, fighting with Pascal Verlein, and then he... He binned it at the turn one chicane and then was, you know, starting this sort of procession of drivers that started to bin it at that first chicane. I'll be honest, I've kind of lost count of how uh, of how many people and who actually went off. Um, but uh, but but one of them that I do remember that was quite race deciding was Pascal Verlein going off. Um, I, I don't think it was actually at the first chicane. I thought I think it was at the final corner. He just went too deep and slammed into. No, the wall. it was the first chicane, Jack. No, it was, what, what, it was what, the first chicane. Was it the first chicane? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I well, and then and uh, and then for then for Max uh, for Max Gunther, it was um uh, it was just plain sailing. All you need to do is bring the car to the finish, and so yeah, it was. It uh it was a real race of attrition. Um Yeah, and obviously Maxi Gunther, you know, he wasn't the quickest driver. Pascal Verlein for about ten laps before he 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 managed to smash it into the wall at, at turn one on lap eleven. You know, he he Pascal was on him and Maxi Gunther for the last two races, Ed, hasn't actually been the quickest driver. Stoffel Van Dorn probably has been the quickest driver over the last two events, um, obviously by getting the pole. So he's been the man really to beat, but he's beating himself at the moment. And Maxi Gunther, give him credit. The boy is super quick, but the key thing for sim racing, which everyone needs, is super consistency. And that is what he has. Indeed. And I bet, Jack, you'll be hoping when uh, they do the wet qualifying for Monica that your super consistency wins out <laughs> and gets you up from 57th place. But yeah, in the case of Maxi Gunther, it's uh, really stood him in good. So while those around him have uh, lost their head, he has kept his. So that it has been really impressive. And of course, every... Maxi Gunther is really highly rated. I think we had him like uh, third or fourth in our top five Formula E drivers of the season so far for season six. And we did that earlier this year he was just behind Evans and De Costa and uh, of course he's beaten both of those in all the sim races so far because it's one of them uh, so yeah the, the only real thing is that he's not quite been able to the outright one lap pace over Stoffel Van Dorn but uh, you never know we could see him really dom potentially dominate this championship in all the remaining races it's interesting to see, you know, obviously from then on, from the crash, obviously Verlon went backwards. He really damaged his car and then he was getting overtaken left, right and centre. And he was even, he was pushed to the last point, you know, from like jean Eric Verne overtaking him at the, at the final corner. So he went from second and they were nearly like 10 seconds clear at this stage, all the way down to 10. So, you know, the damage, it really affected him. But I suppose... In terms of the crashes, at least they were actual crashes and, and not forced crashes or not deliberate crashes, Jack, as we've also seen this weekend in across the esports world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bold man to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were some, um, uh, yeah, there were some other incidents. Uh, thankfully, none in, none in Formula E, and none as far as I'm aware in uh, Formula One. A few in IndyCar, and um, uh, and yeah, um, none in the race. Um, but yeah, no, it was yeah. I uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna dabble on this th this incident for long, but um, yeah, I I I am disappointed in uh, in Simon Pagano um for doing that, but yeah. 
that's 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 all I really want to say on the matter. Yeah, for those of you who obviously don't know, reference in the Indy car race where they decided to actually deliberately crash into each other um, and sort of ruin the spectacle um, towards the end. But at least we didn't see that in Formula E, and half of our crashes at least were drivers actually getting it wrong. <laughs>